10 teams have been promoted in England's Football League and 12 have been relegated. That means that 22 out of the 92 teams have changed divisions. And for me, that's not enough. So today I've made it so every team in the Football League is either promoted or relegated from the Premier League all the way through to the National League. But with so much changing every single season, are we actually going to see any change? For example, at the end of season one, these 12 teams, including Manchester United, are getting relegated from the Premier League. And these 12 teams are getting promoted from League One. So surely in next season's championship, the 12 relegated sides are going to absolutely wipe the floor with the 12 promoted sides. And I'm just going to assume that these 12 sides that got promoted from the championship are going to finish in the bottom 12 in the Premier League next season. And for those of you interested, these 12 teams are getting relegated into non-league football, whereas Solihull Moors are going for their first ever season in the Football League. But heading into season two, so far the predictions are coming true as the top eight from last season's Premier League is still the top eight this season and all 12 championship sides have been relegated. And it's the exact same story in the championship with the former League One sides all being relegated and the former Premier League sides all being promoted. Dropping into League One though, we are starting to see a little bit of change though because Sutton United and Gillingham have had back-to-back -back promotions from League Two and now up to the championship. Championship. This means that Wigan and Birmingham City have been relegated for two successive seasons. Although Birmingham did get a 12 point deduction for being in administration. Poof, minus 6.5 million in the bank account. That is not looking good for the Blues. And even worse, they've got Frank Lampard as the manager. A fate worse than death. Dropping into League Two, Wrexham and Notts County have had back-to-back -back promotions, but all the other National League sides have been relegated, alongside Morecambe and a double relegation for Cambridge United. And as for the National League, well, the 12 teams that got relegated from League Two have been promoted. So as you can see, the theory of so much is changing, in the end, not a lot actually changes, is starting to come true, but there are a few teams breaking the mold. So heading into season three, basically everything is reset to what it was at the very start of the video. But this time, Man United saved themselves from relegation by coming sixth in the table and Leicester themselves get relegated despite qualifying for the Europa League. Gillingham and Sutton United are on their way back down from the Championship and in League One, Wrexham make it another promotion as they go up to the Championship. Notts County though are getting relegated back down to League Two. Three promotions in a row for Wrexham can make it four and go to the Premier League next season. Birmingham and Wigan are on their way back at the tables as they gain promotion from League Two, but Harrogate become the first team to get stuck back in the National League as they only finish 15th place. So actually what we've kind of seen is the teams that got promoted in season one have been promoted again after getting relegated. So we're gonna see a lot of yo-yoing between the same leagues, I think. A season further forward and back in the Premier League, we still haven't seen any of the championship sides break into the top eight. Although Watford came pretty close, just three points behind Man United. Wrexham couldn't make it into the championship. They suffer their first relegation of this video as all the former Premier League sides get back promoted and the former League One sides are back relegated. Relegated. I think the jump from League One to the Championship is just too big for these clubs. I think it's going to be impossible almost for some of these clubs from League One to get into the Premier League. But in the future, we might start to see some changes. Gillingham are once again breaking the mould. They've come eighth place in League One and they get themselves into the Championship. And dropping into League Two, Cambridge, who were in the National League, have had two promotions in a row now as they head back to League One. Alongside Oldham and Chesterfield, who started off in the National League. So there are some teams starting to break free of the cycle of promotion relegation promotion relegation and in the national league dorking wanderers are making their first appearance in the football league following their promotion in 11th place but it's not looking good for rochdale mansfield or walsall as they miss out on promotion so at the moment wrexham are our most successful side having had three promotions and one relegation but actually i think it's gillingham who are second right now as including this season they've had three promotions and one relegation this time though we're going to fast forward to the end of the 2032 season which is 10 years in the future. And by looks of things, Middlesbrough have broken into the Premier League's top eight 
and are staying there. It's actually the first time they appear to have stayed in the top eight of the Premier League as well, looking at their history. So congratulations to them. They are the first team to break the mold. It was at the expense of Southampton. They had one finish in the top eight, but then couldn't maintain it and lost out to Middlesbrough. And we are seeing some other sides start to break the cycle in the championship as Cholton get promoted back to the Premier League for the first time. It's their first time back in the Premier League since 2007. But as you can tell, for the most part, it's still pretty much the usual suspects getting promoted and relegated. There's not been a whole lot of change in 10 years. Dropping into League One, a big congratulations to Bromley who are getting themselves into the championship for the first time as they beat Southend and Salford by a singular point to get promoted. Also some big props to Woking and Dorking Wanderers though for getting to League One. Look at this upward trend from Dorking Wanderers. I mean, in real life, I think they'll do really well and get themselves into the Football League soon, but obviously this kind of accelerates things a little bit, but they've had such an amazing decade or so. League Two features some really interesting teams, but the one I'm most interested in here is Wrexham, because we saw them do so well to start off with, and now they've been relegated back to the National League. After such a great start for Wrexham, they couldn't last in the Championship, bounced between League One and League Two, got back to the Championship, but have now had three relegations in a row. But it's all smiles for South Shields as they get promoted to the Football League for the first time as well. But as you can see, there's a few teams in this division, such as Stevenage and Swindon, who are really struggling in the National League. And although I didn't make any changes to the National League relegation or promotion for National League North and South, some teams have dropped down, including Morecambe, who just won the title, Harrogate came second, but Northampton have finished down in eighth place. But worst of all, Yeovil have dropped down into 10th place in the National League South. I mean, the, the drop they've had, obviously, is mental from a championship all the way down. It could be worse, I suppose, because you could be Scunthorpe United. Jumping another decade in the future to 2042, I want to start off with the FA Cup because no one out of the ordinary has won it. It's been won by the same few teams every single season, which is... Um, not a whole lot of fun, really, is it? And the League Cup is very similar, although very strangely, Tottenham have become a dominant side in this in the past decade or so. And for you lower league fans out there, the Papa John's Trophy, well, that's got quite some interesting winners in there, from Birmingham City to Nottingham Forest, but also teams like Grimsby. But the Premier League's top eight, again, hasn't really changed. Sheffield United and Fulham find themselves in there now, but I think Liverpool, Spurs, Arsenal, City and Chelsea, none of those teams have been relegated. But Man United in sixth place have been there for quite a long time, but they did suffer a couple of relegations, as you can see, but they got straight back up, winning the championship title immediately. We are starting to see some new teams getting that promotion and relegation battle for the Premier League, though, as Plymouth, Ipswich and Charlton remain in the top 12 for the championship. This is the first time Ipswich are going to be back in the Premier League, so congrats to them. And Plymouth have briefly flirted with the Premier League before getting relegated from the Championship, but then winning League One and getting back promoted the first time of asking. Big up to Notts County though, they might have come 23rd, but they are in the Championship, so that's a really good resurgence from them from the National League. Bromley look to have become a yo-yo team between League One and the Championship, as they go up and down, up and down every single season. And congratulations to Weymouth of all teams. They finished 16th this season, along alongside Solihull Moors and Curzon Ashton from the non-league scene. It's their first time going into League One as well, so big up to them. Hopefully they get themselves promoted and into the Premier League. League Two is big once again with Bolton Wanderers getting relegated to the National League alongside Wrexham, who again had a really good start, but just seemed to have fallen off really. They went all the way back down to the National League, then got three promotions in a row, and now have had three relegations in a row. No longer owned by Rob and Ryan either, so the money has gone. And then in the National League, well, it's not looking good for Northampton or Stevenage as they get relegated. Doncaster aren't doing very well either, as are Morecambe, but congratulations to South Shields and Dorking Wanderers getting back promoted to the Football League. Dorking again. They've had a very tumultuous time as well, going up and down all the way from League One to the National League. Also, in three weeks' time, I've got a really cool trip planned, and it would be amazing to hit 100,000 subscribers when I get there. We're about 3,000 subscribers away, so if you've watched my videos before and never clicked that subscribe button, please do so. Uh, we're in a bit of a race against time here. It'd be amazing if we could get to that milestone. So 2052 now, 30 years in the future, and Blackpool have got themselves eighth in the Premier League, which feels like the first wild thing to have happened in this video. To be fair, they've been 
actually bouncing up and down between the Premiership and the Championship every single season for the past two decades. And this is the first time they've actually finished in the top eight of the Premier League. So congratulations to them and to Sunderland who may have come ninth, but they have qualified for the Conference League. We'll come back and look at the European competitions at the very end of the video to see if Blackpool actually went on to win the Europa League. But every single time I look into the Championship, it's the exact same teams getting promoted, former Premier League clubs. I mean, Barnsley seem to have snuck in there, as have Charlton and Ipswich. We saw Charlton and Ipswich quite a few times going up and down. Uh, so Barnsley are kind of like the new one um, who have been in the Premier League the past five years or so. But once again, Wrexham are down here in 23rd place. They just seem to be the biggest yo-yo club of all time. They just go through down to the National League, up to the Championship, back down to the National League, and then up to the Championship again. There is no boring seasons. I mean, no one's got a boring season. It's promoted and relegated every single season. But for Wrexham, it is just these huge swings up and down. Big news, though, for Aston Villa. They're getting relegated to League One. And actually, for the past decade or so, they have been going up and down between the Championship and League One. So they are no longer a big club. But you could argue that Norwich and Middlesbrough have dropped off even more, which is even more mental because Middlesbrough were the first team to break into the top eight of the Premier League that weren't already in the top eight of the Premier League essentially. So Middlesbrough have had a big drop off but a huge rise is Bromley. Congratulations to them. They've had a few times that they've been in the top eight of the Premier League actually Middlesbrough as you can see but they were almost two decades ago. Whereas Bromley actually did have a season in the Premier League. Wow look at that. It was in the 2043-44 season they came bottom of the Premier League but they still got themselves up there. That is the first non-league team I've seen get to the Premier League. Congratulations to them. Oh, it's not good if you're a Sheffield Wednesday fan because in League Two, they've just been relegated to the National League. Not for the first time either. They actually had a few seasons stuck in the National League before they got promoted back up to League One and now have had two relegations in a row. And they will be joining teams like Crawley and Morecambe in the National League next season so they couldn't get promoted. But QPR might be the biggest drop that we've seen. They are down in the National League right now and they start off in the Championship. That is the biggest drop we've seen. Yeah, not a good long-term graph at all, is it? And so another decade into the future, to 2062, the top five of the Premier League is almost the exact same as it's been every single season. Man United actually came second and Arsenal down to sixth place, but it just seems like that top six, aside from Man United, have never been relegated. Congrats to Blackburn and Leeds though for coming seventh and eighth place. But I think the biggest applause has to go to QPR because we saw them moments ago in the National League and they sort of bounced between League One and League Two for a while before getting three promotions in a row uh, to the Premier League, then getting relegated then promoted straight away again. So congrats QPR, that is a, a wild turnaround of form. Literally from one of the worst performing teams to one of the best in the space of a decade. Looking down into the championship, congratulations to Fleetwood Town who have been promoted to the Premier League for the very first time. You love to see it if you're a Fleetwood Town fan, but you hate to sit if you're an Aston Villa fan or relegated to League One. Where Birmingham City have just been promoted back to the championship, which might be for the first time since they got relegated. Birmingham have been really poor in this. Ah, for the last decade, okay, they've been bouncing around between the championship and League One, but prior to that, they were kind of like a League One, League Two side. Dulwich Hamlet and Hereford have been promoted to League One from League Two, which is great news for them. And even getting relegated back down to the National League is quite the achievement for Billericay Town and Ebbsfleet United, who are perennial non-league sides. But finally, Scunthorpe have been promoted from the National League. This hasn't happened often in this experiment. In fact, it's only happened in the very recent history where they've been up to League Two and then straight back down again. They have been rubbish in this and they have finally decided to come good. Now in the Champions League, there isn't really a whole lot of change going on there. It's the usual Premier League sides winning it alongside Bayern Munich and Real Madrid and Barcelona every now and again. But it's mostly dominated by the English sides, which kind of makes sense because they've only got the English League loaded up in this database. But the Europa League is where I thought things were going to get fun. Uh, but it's not that fun. Blackburn won the Europa League in 2059-60. Fulham won it in 49-50. But other than that, Newcastle, Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea, they've won it a few times. I was kind of hoping we'd see Blackpool win it, really. The Conference League, though, well, this is more fun because recently we saw Charlton lift the title against Roma in the final in 2060-61. Blackburn won it in 56-57. Sunderland in 54-55. Blackburn again in 46-47. Crystal Palace in 38-39. And Stoke in 36-37. It's not quite Blackpool, but these are certainly sides that I don't think in reality would have any chance of winning it. So you know what? Right at the start of the video, I thought having every single 
single team promoted or relegated was going to be absolutely mental and we'd see teams like Billericay in the Premier League immediately. But because there is so much change every single season, not all that much changes overall. There are a few outliers out there, but for the most part, the status quo stays the same. But in my last video, I was really pushing for a lot of change when me and Second Yellow Card became football agents in Football Manager. It was a really fun video to make, so check it out right now. 